Have you ever heard of the band Steam Power Giraffe? If you're a newcomer, this video is a great introduction into the long and fascinating history of this band that unfortunately goes largely unknown to mainstream audiences. With a few personal opinions thrown in for good measure, the Steam Powered Giraffe has quickly become one of my new favorite bands. The band describes itself as, quote, a musical act that combines robot pantomime, puppetry, ballet, comedy, projections, and music, end quote. The style of music most prevalent in Steam Powered Giraffe songs generally consists of a mix between rock and pop influences from the last century. So, where do we begin? Well, Steam Powered Giraffe has a lot of lore and story behind each and every one of its members. We won't be going into the lore too extensively, as I encourage you to look into it for yourself, but we will scratch the surface. The robots were originally built in the year 1896 by Colonel Peter Walter I. The automaton's original purpose was to be used as war bots against a band of hostile copper elephants that were causing chaos near the Nile River. The origins of the band can be found in the lyrics of one of their most popular songs from their first album, Brass Goggles. Because you cannot sleep Kind of wild to wash out When he learned from the Nile Copper African elephants Turning hostile So we built these wonderful Automaton boats And a very big steam Throughout the ensuing decades The band would be used as a form of entertainment Due to their built-in musical abilities As well as fighting in various famous wars Throughout the 20th century Including World War I, II, and the Vietnam War. After Vietnam, the robots all downloaded a vow of peace to never use their weapons again, and only serve as musical entertainers from that point forward, forming the original band that we know today. Electricity is in my soul. The original quartet followed four members in total. David Michael Bennett, who plays the spine, Isabella Bunny Bennett, or Rabbit, John Sprague, as the John, and Aaron Burke, aka Upgrade. The Spine, my personal favorite of the group, and debatably the most popular member, is one of the two band members to consistently stay on the cast for the group's entire existence, most likely due to David Michael Bennett being one of the band's founders in the first place. Known as the level-headed and middleman of the group, the Spine is a cyberpunk-styled robot who has gone through a number of design changes over the years to add more detail to his look, but has always maintained his signature fedora and sleek black vest and pants. Leading 31 songs in total, the Spine's most defining characteristic is his extreme vocal range. He can go from the highest of highs to the lowest of lows. To put that into perspective, here's an excerpt from the song, Saturday Night. Is there such a thing as too much of a good thing? I ask myself that every day. Yeah, me and my baby love Saturday night. Saturday. Here we go. Yes, that is the same person singing. The next member of the original quartet is Rabbit, portrayed by Isabella Bunny Bennett, the second of the two lifelong members of the band. The early days of the portrayal of Rabbit were much different from the later ones, due to Bunny's real-world identity as a transgender female. In 2014, the character of Rabbit started to transition from male to female, with a real-world counterpart starting the transition in 2013. Due to this, Rabbit's appearance and voice changed throughout the years, going from the goofy bronze art deco male robot, who wore a black leather jacket and a top hat with brass goggles, with a more neutral to high voice, to the goofier, more high-pitched female version, with a black dress and red tights who also still wears the top hat and brass goggles. Rabbit's vocal range isn't nearly that of the spine, but what she lacks in range, she makes up for in talent. Rabbit's voice is much higher than her brother's and pulls off some truly impressive voice work. Rabbit leads a total of 28 SPG songs, making her the second main vocalist in the band, right behind the spine. The John, played by Jonathan Sprague, is the third member of the original band. The John is an Art Deco bronze style robot who was present for the group's first two studio albums and led six songs during that time. Generally much slower in tone compared to his contemporaries when it came to vocals, the John was mainly used for backup and harmonizing with the band in its early years. Not a whole lot is known about the fourth member of the original band, Upgrade, played by Aaron Burke. Upgrade was not officially on any SPG album until 2017, with the release of the original 2009 version of their first album, which featured her vocals and her very own song. Upgrade was the pink-styled robot who wore black dress and a black cap. Ready, boys? <laughs> and 
and uh, a robot that looks like a girl. All right. Yeah, she looks ready. The band started out as a simple street act in 2008 on the streets of San Diego, California, in various parks and venues. The original acts saw the band play some of their most iconic songs to later be released, and was a hit in the small circles they performed in. The crew found some success with their original songs and covers, but were not truly noticed until 2009, when they released their first album, appropriately titled, Album One. We're gonna start the show, I'd like you all to know, you need to cover your eyes, please, please, count to twin. The music on album one can best be described as slower steampunk melodic harmonies. Not exactly for mainstream audiences, I know. But the album did have some majorly influential songs that would shape the band's future, such as Clockwork Vaudeville or Brass Goggles. The first album also introduced the humans to the band as well, who were exactly as described, humans. The two most notable of which were Michael Reed, aka the one man band, and Steve Negret, We'll get to these two later. After the release of album one, Erin Burke decided she no longer wanted to be a part of the band due to her not particularly enjoying singing and wanting to pursue her acting career. This prompted the band to release a newer version of album one without upgrade. A few songs had to be rearranged and removed in order to accommodate for her absence. And in my personal opinion, I feel the original 2009 version of album one featuring upgrade is superior to the revised one. An upgrade leaving was a disappointing loss due to her fun and bubbly stage performances and her voice was definitely a good change of pace to hear compared to the other members of the band. And though Upgrade was gone, she still had very good relations with the band, and returned 10 years later in 2018 for the band's 10 year anniversary show. My After the success of album one, the band's sophomore album, The Two Cents Show, released in 2012. By far their most popular album, The Two Cents Show's style of sound leans more into the western genre that was present in album one, but was cranked up a notch in The Two Cents Show, with this album showing a great continuity of genre and themes throughout its songs that make it feel very connected as an album. The album was a success and sprung off some of the band's greatest and most popular songs, such as Honey Bee and Automated Electronic Harmonics. Though the Two Cent Show was a success in the eyes of the fans, things weren't so great backstage. The band had a falling out with founding member John Sprague due to his apparent unreliability when it came to the band. He would often miss practice and even live shows. This was due to John having a child and working another job besides being in the band, as it wasn't making him enough money at the time. And to be fair, Steam Powered Giraffe isn't just any regular band. In order to be a member, one must put hours worth of makeup on constantly, be a mime, an actor, along with being able to sing and play instruments. It's a lot for a regular person to be a part of. Even though the John's departure was not as smooth or goodwilled as Upgrade's, the band is still in good relation with them, and the John returned alongside Upgrade in the 2018 10-year anniversary show. John's absence left the band needing a new member, as two robots was not enough. What we need is something steam-powered. What we all need is something steam-powered. This is where Sam Luke comes in. Sam was a friend of the band and one of the humans who played drums for them from 2010 to 2012. Sam decided to help his bandmates out and become the new third member of the band, Hatchworth. Defined by his signature mustache and spectacles, Hatchworth brought a very unique sound to the band. On the surface, one might think Hatchworth's voice would be more akin to that of the Spines. But on the contrary, Hatchworth has debatably the highest pitched voice out of all the robots, and brings with him some of the most unique and absurd Steam Power Giraffe songs, like Hatch Fever and Fancy Shoes. With their new bandmate in tow, in 2013 the band went on to release their third album, titled Mark III. Mark III leans more into the cyberpunk futuristic aspect of the band, with songs like Mecto Amor and the Steam Power Giraffe song, but still retain the charm and style of their old music through tracks such as I'll Rust With You and Away Into Your Heart. But overall, Mark III sounds and looks very different from the band's previous endeavors. The pre-existing members even got redone costume designs for the album. These changes weren't bad at all, just different. 
Mark III has a little bit of everything for everyone. Catchy, upbeat rock songs, slower, more serious and methodical beats, and nonsense songs that are basically comedy sketches. Many consider Mark III to be the best album the band has released because of it. And after all is said and done, the final track of Mark III ends in the message. See you next time in space. The Vice Quadrant is... interesting. Released in 2015, The Vice Quadrant is a double album grand space opera containing 28 tracks that follows the band's adventures throughout space. This album marks Rabbit's first official work fully transformed into a woman, and was the band's fourth studio album to release. This album is by far the most different Steam Powered Giraffe release to date. The album tries to follow a coherent story throughout its 28 tracks, detailing the band's encounters of love, loss, and fun in space. But in my personal opinion, The Vice Quadrant is the weakest of the Steam Powered Giraffe lineup of albums. It's filled a little bit too much to the brim for my taste, with a convoluted and confusing plot, and is in general just too long. There are some gems throughout, like Fire Fire and Solaton, but they're overshadowed by the sheer amount of other songs that aren't super unique or special. And along with the worst Steam Powered Giraffe song ever to release, Gigi the Giraffe. After the Vice Quadrant, the band released an album titled Music from Steamworld Heist. Steamworld Heist is a video game made in 2015 that commissioned Steam Powered Giraffe to make its music, with the band even appearing in the game. The soundtrack consists of remakes of previous popular songs, along with new music made just for the game. This soundtrack may be a write-off to some people, but I would not recommend sleeping on it, as there are some very strong tracks to be found, along with some very compelling remakes. One year after the release of the Vice Quadrant, and a little after the music from Steam World Heist, Steam Powered Giraffe released their sixth studio album, Quintessential. Not much can really be said about this album. It's a simple release that has a lot of diversity in its tracks, and doesn't exactly follow a set theme. I feel Quintessential is on the weaker end of the Steam Powered Giraffe discography. There are no true bad songs on this album, but there aren't any truly that stand out either. But that's just my personal opinion, and I am fully aware many fans consider Quintessential to be one of, if not the best, SPG album. I just don't see it that way. Six months after the release of Quintessential, Sam Luke, Hatchworth, announced that he would be leaving the band due to him wanting to pursue independent work. It was stated in community posts that Sam didn't feel the same amount of love and attachment for Hatchworth as the Bennett Twins did for their characters. Sam Luke did stay with the band for the proper amount of time needed to find a replacement, and then made his leave. That replacement was Zero. Played by Brian Barberin, Zero is meant to be an amalgamation made of scraps of previous robots, and was hidden away until 1992, when he was discovered and became a member of Steam Powered Giraffe. He quickly became the star of the show, up until 2012, when he left the band to pursue a solo career, and had to be conveniently removed from all previous material as if he never existed at all. In 2017, Zero returned to the band after going bankrupt due to losing all of his money, investing in the abstract concept of love. He was welcomed back in open arms by the current members. Zero's return also provided an in-lore explanation as to why Hatchworth left. Since Hatchworth saw Zero as a fitting replacement, Hatchworth thought it was the perfect time for him to go pursue his lifelong goal of what's known as goldfishing. Whatever that means. Sam wasn't gone for very long though, as in 2018, the band hosted their 10 year anniversary show, bringing back all previous robots for one grand show. These old robots included the John, Upgrade, and Hatchworth. The show was released as a digital concert and can be bought online for $15. Remember those two humans I brought up earlier, Michael Reed and Steve Negret? Well, in March of 2020, some serious allegations were brought up against Michael Reed 
due to him having inappropriate relations with fans, some of whom being underage. That's all I'll get into here. If you want more information, just search for it. It's not hard to find. But in short, the band responded by quickly kicking him out of the band and removing him from all newer music videos. All of this happened while Michael Reed himself fled to a new country. Not long after Reed left, fellow bandmate Steve Negret announced his departure from the band as well, due to him also having relations with fans. The difference being that no one was underage, and Steve left on his own accord. While Michael Reed denies all allegations against him, though the actions done by Steve are no doubt bad, the forthcomingness and regret he put forward made him look much more respectful and mature compared to his counterpart, Michael Reed. Regardless of the details, the band lost two veteran bandmates and definitely needed to recover. Now that that's out of the way, after the live show and all the controversy, the band got to work on their sixth studio album, titled 1896. This album was the first to feature Zero as a lead vocalist, and contained 22 songs. Though 10 of them were acoustic versions of various songs already on the album, and are not available on streaming services. So really 12 songs. Zero's jazzy and soul-inspired voice brought a new and unique sound to the band that works very well with the pre-established members. The album is structured in an order that is new to the band as well. Every member gets three unique songs, with a song at the end combining all their voices, and one additional song sung by Ali and the Equinox Band, a fictional band that was created as the basis for a spine song of the same name. Overall, the album is a very strong addition to the SPG discography, and should definitely be given a chance by new and old times alike. Currently, there has been no talk of a seventh album, but one can expect it to come within the next year or two. And now that that's all done and out of the way, I thought it would be fun at the end to give my personal ranking of every one of SPG Studio albums, just to show where I stand on them. At first, I have the Two Cent Show. I admittedly look at this one with a bit of rose-tinted glasses due to a bias that the Two Cent Show was my first Steam Powered Giraffe album, but it still provides a great listening experience, especially if you're a fan of that wild western, goofy style of music, which I personally am a sucker for. Next up is Mark III. Mark III is probably their strongest album, objectively speaking, but I feel it lacks the same amount of charm the Two Cent Show brought. Mark III is still an amazing album with so much diversity in its tracks. I could listen to it over and over again, I just don't think it's as strong as the Two Cent Show. Third is 1896. I was honestly not expecting to put this one so high up on the list, but 1896 turned out to be one of my favorite albums yet. With the general disappointment I felt for the previous two albums, my hopes weren't exactly through the roof for 1896. But I was pleasantly surprised with the quality this one brought to the table, and would highly recommend it. Fourth up on the list is Album 1. The first album certainly has its quirks, as the band was still finding out its identity, but it's still a very strong start to the band's career. Tracks like Electricity is in My Soul and Brass Goggles really bring Album 1 to become a great introduction to the band. Second to last on the list is Quintessential. I thought Quintessential wasn't very exciting when it came to Steam Powered Giraffe. It wasn't bad by any means, just felt a little bland compared to everything else the band had done. Even the Vice Quadrant. And last but not least is the Vice Quadrant. Though I do think the Vice Quadrant is more unique than Quintessential, that doesn't mean I think it's better. The lengthy and convoluted plot, combined with way too many uninspired feeling songs, always leaves me feeling disappointed when I finish it. I still don't think this album is bad at all, as it has its moments, just not great. And for good measure, even though it's not a real album, music from SteamWorld Heist will be put on the bottom, just because it, half of it is songs we already know, and half of it are admittedly good, but not a great quantity of songs. But anyway, that's the story of Steam Powered Giraffe. I hope you enjoyed and got at least something out of this video, and maybe learned a little bit more about this very unique 
an interesting sounding and looking band. I can't wait to see what the future holds for Steam Powered Giraffe. And I hope you're all around to continue to listen with me. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you all enjoyed watching it as I sure enjoyed making it. And if you want more deep dives into bands or subjects similar to this one, let me know. I'm trying to get away from the whole video game thing for a little while. But anyway, thanks again. Hope to see you in the next one. See you around. Bye-bye.